All right, guys, I'm going to show you how to use your ePortfolio in D2L. So when you log into D2L, you have to make sure that you have selected the right course. Our course is HR01 underscore HR gain OP and so on. It should be at the bottom of all of your course lists. So once you've gone into the course, you need to select the ePortfolio, which is right up here in the top left hand corner. When you click on ePortfolio, it opens up everything that you have in your portfolio. Your portfolio should be a showcase or a folder where you keep track of your best work. So as you go through the year, you should be deleting pieces that no longer reflect how well you have done, unless you want to keep it to compare with something better that you've done later on in the year. This is not like your M drive or your Sky drive, where you would save absolutely all of your work. You can use Locker, which is in here, and you can go and explore that on your own. You can also use your SkyDrive or your M drive on the school computer to keep track of all of your work. The ePortfolio is to use as a portfolio for your learning. When you are going in to add something new, you have two options. Over here is the Add Something New, and you have all of these options. I would recommend that for the time being, as you start to get used to how to use ePortfolio, you first get used to uploading files to your portfolio. So to do that, you click here on Upload, and then go down to File from Computer. Unless you are using, you're uploading something from your locker, which is your file saving space in D2L. We haven't yet learned how to do that. So upload a file from the computer. When you select that, it's going to open up the box which helps you to find out where what you're going to put in. So select upload, and then you're going to go in and select something that you have done. So I'm going to select the Roz Tree, which is the novel that I wrote because I think it's the best piece of writing that I've done so far. It's fully uploaded now. We can see that it's not uploading, so it's uploaded. We're going to select Done. The next thing that we need to do is hit Next. There's nothing else that we can do other than Cancel. You have two things that you can do here. First one is to add a name, and that's necessary. So if your file uploads as a bunch of weird numbers or letters that you don't understand, you need to upload you need to rename your upload something that you will understand. So this is called the Roz tree because that's what the file was called and this makes sense because that's um, exactly what it is. But I want to add in brackets a little bit more information so that when I go through my list of what I have, I know exactly what it is. So manuscript in brackets. You can go down to description and this is where for your portfolio I want you doing your reflections. If you need to make this bigger, all you need to do is grab onto these two lines at the bottom and you can drag it out and you can drag it down and you have lots of space to work in. So, description is going to be your response, your reflection of what you've done. Please, please, please do not just write one or two sentences, I liked this, it was my best work so far. That's not descriptive enough and when you look back on it in a few years, or even at the end of the school year, you may not remember exactly what you meant. So, please be specific. I'll give you an example right now.
So that's my reflection. So the Raj Tree was the first piece of writing that I did. That was a very long piece. I think it helped me to develop as a writer. I haven't yet revised this version, but when I do, I know that the story will be even stronger. The thing I have improved the most on, and so on. You, you read it probably as I was typing it. I don't need to waste extra time by reading it all to you. What I want you to focus on here is really taking some time to dig into what you did. Really give a reflection for yourself that tells you what you learned and what you did better. Take the time to think about what you've done. It has to be more than I had fun doing it or um, I think that I'm awesome now. That's fine if you think that. You can say that. Back it up. I really want some reasons and explanations. And we spent a lot of time on reasons and explanations. So please make sure that you are giving reasons and explanations for why you're adding this specific artifact to your portfolio. If you're putting it in, it's got to be good. So explain why it's there. When you have finished this, press save and only press it once. If you press it more than once, you probably will think you lost it. Um, it may upload more than once. It, you, you're going to have a whole bunch of other things that could happen. It could all delete or just disappear. There are all of these other options down here. I want you to leave these checked off. Allow others to add and view comments if they have permission and assessments if they have permission. The only people who can see this are going to be you and me because you're going to share it with me. If you want to share it with someone else, for example, your parents work for the school board, or your, you want to share it with um, your principal or another teacher that you have to show them what you did, you can do that, that's fine, but you have to be the one who's giving permission. So you'll save and close, and the reason that you save and close is because you're finished with it, you've checked it over, everything's good. You can see right here, I'll highlight it, this is what you'll see whenever you open it up. So it'll say the Raw's Tree Manuscript. That's not what yours will say. But um, this is a, a Word document. That's the icon for a Word document. It will tell you, and it will tell me when I see it, exactly when you uploaded it. So, for example, it's 9.50 p.m. right now. You guys are probably fast asleep in bed, and I'm doing this work for you. Um, which is fine, because, you know, that's my job, and I love it. So this is, you could see when I did this if I shared it with you. So if you do it at 9.50 p.m., I'll probably call, you, call up your parents and say, hey, your kid's up on the computer. So you need to make sure you're not uploading things at 9.50 p.m., please, and thank you. You need to be in bed so you can be awake for class. Down here will be your description that you wrote. Notice how when I pressed enter and I split it up into different paragraphs, all of that is gone now. So you don't need to do that. It's only for you to help organize yourself as you write it. It's all going to chunk together into one piece. We're not going to add any reflections or comments or assessments for anything here. You're finished here for now. The last thing that you need to do, if you haven't done it yet, is share. So you just click on this arrow and select share. There are all these other options. I don't want you to worry about them. Select share. You need to now click add users and groups. Here's where you search. So you would search for whoever you want to share with. In your case, it's Patrick Gaindo. Once you've found that, I'm going to go down. There are a lot of Patricks, so it's all showing up. So the, probably the easiest way to find me will be to just enter my last name. There aren't as many Gaindos. As soon as that's found, all you need to do is click Add. You don't need to send me an invitation. I will see that you've done it. So here, Patrick Gaino, add, and then save and close. And you're done. That's it. You can log off. You can close out of there. If you want to add it to a collection because you have created a collection, maybe with someone else that you're working with, you can add to a collection by clicking on that big binder clip. So here are two collections that I've already started. So if this was something that I wanted to share with my classmates, I could select the collection and I called this collection Dana and I shared Dana's collection with her. I shared Nick's collection with him and I only shared it with him and because I only shared it with him, I called it Nick. You can create collections and you can call them whatever you want. You could call it math problems, you could call it uh, the human body science project for um, Andy and Dakota and Draven, it's up to you, you call it whatever you want, 
This really is something probably that your teacher will use more than you will until you're in high school. So I can add it to whatever collections I want. I select add and now it's there. So as of right now, Dana and Nick could log into their collections. So this is what the collection looks like when you click on it. And they could actually open up and read the manuscript. If you've added something to a collection that you don't want to, then you need to go in and change that. We'll cover that in another lesson. So what I'm going to do right now is go back to my ePortfolio and I'm going to actually now delete this. So if you have realized that you've made a mistake or that you don't want this here anymore, all you need to do is select delete. It will prompt you to confirm that you actually want to delete it. So make sure it's the right one because once it's gone, it's gone. We can never get it back. I'm going to say yes. And it's gone. So that's that. That's everything. The last thing for you to do is any other work that you have to do in here and then log out. So you always have to make sure you log out. And we're done. Have a great day. And check this whenever you need these steps.